How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. So I did some summons with the story beats that I have farmed and I actually pulled a Kohane which is excellent so now I can showcase Kohane for reals. So with that let's take a look at the team that I am running for today. There are two teams. The first one is going to be a heavily pay to win team. The second is going to be pretty much free to play. But if you do need several other builds, you may refer to Red Up Gaming's build link down in the description. Regardless, let's get right into it. So a small preface. This team is not necessarily what you would need in a Whitetail EX. Yes, it will work perfectly fine. But do also take note that you do not need to run Viron with Sushi. You can run Sushi with Mura. So that would be something that I might consider moving into Whitetail EX. And Whitetail EX is dropping really soon, in just about a couple of days time. Okay, so the idea for this build is very simple. Just a ton of skill gauges build up at once. But this is not so random in the sense that this also follows a wombo combo pattern. So Kohane is going to go first. She's going to pump 27% skill gauge to the other units on her left and her right. Of course, Sushi is going to start off with 100% skill gauge as well. So Sushi is not going to benefit so much. But Miguel starts off with 80% skill gauge. So that 27% skill gauge from Kohane is going to push Miguel to 100%. And if you refer to Kohane's ability 1, you add 10% skill gauge to all other units and not yourself. This means that Kohane is actually going to get another 17% skill gauge and not 27% skill gauge after she uses her skill. And this 17% is going to allow Miguel to continuously keep up with Kohane in terms of skill gauge. So Miguel is not going to be falling behind. So what you'll notice is that the Wombo combo works very nicely for at least the first three times that this Wombo combo runs its course. But afterwards, it still works just that it runs slightly different. Basically just a little bit slower. And of course, Furious use over here, not just for healing, right? She also grants Levitate and at the same time increase the attack for wind type units during Levitation. So this comp is extremely strong because Furia and Viron make a very very good combo in terms of cleaning up. So what you see is, after Sushi uses his skill, the boss usually has a little bit of HP because we're going to test this out on a Kaleidoscope, right? So the boss is going to have a little bit of HP and Viron and Furia makes for a very good cleanup crew. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look at the team in action. So pretty much whatever they have shared at the start of the video, Sushi and Kohane are going to start with 100%, but Miguel is going to follow up immediately because Kohane pushes just enough skill gauge for him to go. And this provides Sushi with a ton of buffs before he uses his skill. And here we don't do enough damage to one-shot the boss, but we do use Viron and Fibria as a cleanup crew. And that's it for boss number one, on to boss number two. And from here, I think you can see how Kohane shines a lot. If you have tried to play around with the death book, you would also realize that it's very hard to incorporate it into your wombo combo because the death book pumps skill gauge to yourself as well. So this is what I really like about Kohane's ability number one, where she doesn't pump skill gauge for herself. So this allows her to take the first turn, yet allow the next unit in line to keep up with her skill gauge. And over here, you see that the wombo combo still stands. So the idea here is really very simple. This is basically just a busted skill damage build. So skill damage builds require a lot of skill gauge movement in order to be effective and this build does exactly that. Our skill gauges are pumped all the time and now we are so close to using our skills once again. And now onward to Whitetail. So you have seen everything before, it's the same thing. Just charge a little bit of your skill gauge by running around and then throw all your skills. But here's the good thing about the build which I've said earlier. Even after your death book has finished its use, this team can still continue to wombo combo because the skill gauge of Kohane is 440 and the skill gauge of Miguel is 445, so Kohane is going to have a little bit of advantage. So the turn order still works perfectly. Well, here's assuming that Kohane actually stays below the boss and not above the boss, and therefore Miguel takes a turn before Kohane. That could wreck things up. But generally speaking, the team still functions perfectly in a long fight. So my fastest timing with this team on Necropolis is actually 48 seconds. It's crazy good. And you know what? I actually use this team on my Elemental Kaleidoscopes as well. It's super fast. I'll also probably be using this on several other different boss fights as well, such as the Light Crest event and various other advanced plus bosses. This team has everything right, it has skill gauge, it has healing, and it has super high output. And as promised here is the more free to play team. Yes, I am using a Malted, but to be honest, Malted is pretty much obtainable for anyone. You just need to play about one and a half months to two months, and that should be enough resources for you to get your Malted. But if you are super casual, then you do not need to use a Malted, you can always use the Death Sword. And here is a Death Sword, I'm not going to go through too much about it, it goes up to 300% attack, but it takes a little bit of time to charge up. So this team is going to run a little bit differently to the pay to win team. Number one, we now have Mura, we are no longer using Viron. So the way this team works in terms of the Necropolis is going to be a little bit different. Sushi is going to use his skill first, afterwards the Wombo combo starts to happen a little bit more in order. So very briefly, Sushi uses his skill here, so he's right down to 0% skill gauge. Actually not 0%, he has 5% because he is equipping himself with the Death Book Core. And he's going to get another 27% skill gauge from Kohane and another 55% skill gauge from Jester. So that about sums up to about 87% skill gauge, which is more than enough time for Sushi to build up his skill gauge and throw his skill before the penetration ends. 
And of course, we are getting our penetration from Connor himself. And Connor's penetration buff only lasts for 8 seconds. So that's one thing that you should take note of. It's only 8 seconds. It's very, very low. So later on in the run, you will see that during the white tail fight itself, we actually run out of penetration buff. But it's not really so much of a problem because the wombo combo still works eventually. So do take note of that later on in the run. But without further ado, let's take a look at this team in action. Now at the start, Sushi does use his skill. It's not going to do a lot. It's more to reduce his skill rate down to zero so that we do not waste the effects of the death book and the owl sword. So you can see that our Sushi is ready to go really soon. And he's going to be able to one shot the boss over here regardless. So yeah, 8 seconds on the first boss. And now moving on to the second boss. Now this wombo combo only works up to 3 times because after that Sushi is no longer going to make it in time for the penetration buff but it's only going to fail for that one time and after that the wombo combo suddenly works again it's pretty much magic but you will see this in the white tail fight so just pay attention to the penetration buff that we're going to receive over here Sushi is going to make it on time and this will be the second time that we achieve our wombo combo so all should work as intended so unlike the first boss fight where we had a double cast of Sushi's skill we do not have a double cast over here and neither do we have Viron and Firia to do a little bit of cleaning up for us so unfortunately this is where we waste a lot of time where we have to charge up our skill again and use our wombo combo just to beat this boss so we are actually moving into the white tail fight without our wombo combo but here's the thing right if you're facing one single boss let's say a white tail ex but you can throw four sushi skill in such quick succession then the team is actually pretty powerful anyway let's see what happens when our wombo combo starts to fail which you will see in this white tail fight as you can see, our skill gauges are slightly lower than usual. That's because our death book has run its course and our owl sword has also run its course. So there's very little skill gauge building up over here. But maybe another reason why I like Connor for this team is because he can penetrate through all the gut beasts and get you to the boss immediately. But okay, so now pay attention to the penetration buff. It only lasts 8 seconds, unfortunately. We do not immediately follow up with a jester. So there's some time waster over there. And all that kind of adds up, so you'll see that we are going to run out of penetration a split second before Sushi uses his skill. So yeah, we're not going to do a lot, 1.2 million. But take a look at our skill gauges below. So now everything is really quite low. And this is perfect because now we are actually very well aligned. And this alignment actually stays on to our 4th, 5th, 6th skill onwards. So that's still pretty nice. I hope you see the value in Kohane here, even in a very free-to-play team like this. She single-handedly makes skill gauge boosting a thing because of the fact that her ability 1 does not grant skill gauge to herself. A very small nuance over there but incredibly powerful nonetheless. So this is the reason why I'm so excited to get Kohane she makes skill damage builds so powerful so I suspect we are going to be back into the sushi meta at least for the time being and yes Celti is going to be very powerful with Kohane as well if you're going to run manual combo skill damage builds I may or may not cover the Celti build but I may just link the video down in the description somewhere in a future video or something like that for now we'll just play by ear but anyway if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a thumbs up it really helps the channel this has been free to play by the way and as always I will see you in the next video